looking at our same cycle. So the different cycles we're actually going to be looking at. So we've got our sale cycle, purchase cycle, inventory cycle, um, payroll cycle, non-current assets, receivables. Okay, they're all the different cycles we're actually going to be looking at. So it's, 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 yeah, it's this one here, sale cycle. I gave them up tonight to you there. It's after the I, so I'm going to come back to the now next week, the ISA 315 and then an ISA 300. Just this hour night, like all that planning stuff would be just, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to look at our sale cycle. Okay, so we're looking at our sale cycle. Okay, if you look down the middle of it, we've got ordering, ordering, dispatch, invoicing, receipt. Okay, and we're looking at what can go wrong, what are the risks, what are the object, objectives, how can it be prevented, and what are the controls we can actually put in place. So we're looking at all aspects of our sales, from the ordering right up to the receipt of the actual money. Okay, receipt, ordering, dispatch, invoicing, and receipt. Okay, so in our ordering section, our risks, okay, and the controls we're actually going to put in place. So our, in our ordering section, we have accept the orders from a customer who will not pay, orders taken down incorrectly, orders not fulfilled, orders not accepted at correct prices. And what are the controls we can actually put in place over them? So we credit check all customers and we have an approved customer list. So, accepting orders from a customer who will not pay, the control we can put in place is check, credit check all customers. And do, there's a lot of places doing credit checks now, there's a little, there's a little letter you can send out in there where you do the, the credit check. Have you seen them yet? Yeah. No, they actually come into us at work just to do a credit check. Is it okay to accept them as a customer? Yeah, yeah. But is it okay for uh, someone to go behind their back? And go to their accountant? I suppose it is, yeah. <laughs> Just to check, like, to make sure you can actually. Customer data protection and all that. There's probably something you find out at the interview that you haven't read the small data, probably. Mm -hmm. Do you know, there's, there's something in there. But, like, if you're their accountant and, like, they're very bad to pay, can you actually tell someone, no, you just don't understand, they're, they're very bad to pay? You buy what you were supposed to, but. But you, you buy if you have yeah. a client. But have you any, is there any confidentiality in there? If you have a client, I won't pay you. Sorry. It's hard. Sorry. Yeah, if you have a client that won't pay you, yeah, and I go to you for advice on whether that client is good to pay or not, and you will tell me that they, they won't pay. Oh, I would be hundred percent sure. Hundred percent yeah. sure. All that. It's like there is a confidentiality yeah. of they are like. That's kind of like that. They are. To yeah. So that is. I was actually check that and see. Yeah. Well, I only do come in at work, and they and they are sent back out again. Yeah, because I actually had that situation like where I knew an accountant. But the accountant was actually dealing with other people as well, and I saw a job with them, and I was there, they were, you know, they were. Do you know, for page. Yeah, I would actually find that out, because you see, like, there is a confidentiality yeah. thing inside there. Do you know, that you're not supposed to. No, tell them. But I'm not supposed to tell them about their, their accounts, but can you tell that they're bad payers? Yeah. Do you know, is that the information? It's going to be an interesting Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are things I should check out. And, and check it out and see what they say. Okay, and then you've got an approved customer list. So for orders, we can actually use this as a little control we can put in place. Orders taken down incorrectly, use pre printed order forms. So you actually have, do you know what I mean, the item written down. The, the, and then you, all you do is putting in a quantity or a tick or something inside there. Orders not fulfilled, sequential order forms and matching orders to good delivered notes. Okay, it's GDN, good delivered notes. Orders not accepted at correct prices, used authorised price list. Because we, we do, uh, one, I saw one there where there was um, uh, a customer who had bought and um, fertilizer and like he had about 10 different prices going through the invoices from in a three month period and he agreed a, a verbally a price with them at the start but the price went up and up and up the whole time 
eventually he got her job, eventually he agreed with them. But like that's the thing outward, there was no control, the price was going up and up and up from, from like day to day. We have a supplier like that and every month we get a delivery from them, say for the brooders and seek with the tractors, the big toilet ones. Oh yeah, yeah. And every month we get a delivery, um, the price has changed. So we have to go through them every couple of weeks and because they've like, we seven shops. So if we get an order this week and we have already priced and put up on the shelves, if next week, say, Clarity gets a delivery. And the price has gone up. The price has changed again. And they go up by euro or down by euro or something. Well, something could go up five or something. No, it's a euro fluctuation. And is, is, that, is that because they're, do you know, is it currency different or is it, are they an Irish? I don't know. It, well, it's an Irish company we deal with, but the stuff that they're getting comes from abroad. Yeah, like so is it like currency difference along the line? It could be, but do you think they'd stick, like, for the sake of a euro, they'd the, stick, stick to it? Stick to it, yeah. Anyway, not yeah, like, not instead of changing but it. But every, every two weeks we go through it, and even then we still get caught up the tail with something that's gone up or gone down. Yeah. And that's, it fluctuates every, it's regard, regardless of every, every week. Every week. Jeez. So like, like this is like you know, pre, you know what I mean? This is in the read. This is like what's supposed to happen in a perfect world, which doesn't happen in a in a perfect world. But for our exam, we can use all these little things. So like you'll be looking, they'll give you the sales, and you have to figure out what the internal controls should be in there, and are they actually operating correctly? So looking at our ordering, the four different things can happen, and what the four controls we can actually put in place. Then obviously our next one is going to be we're dispatching the goods. Goods dispatched, the wrong quantity and quality. All goods checked to or order by supervisor before leaving the warehouse. So that's like segregation of your duties. You'd have one person filling the order and you'd have someone at the end actually taking it off to make sure that it was right. I was actually, when I was working the big guys after that, I was coming in at 11 o'clock and all the orders would have been filled and they'd go to the door say at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'd have to go through all of them and make sure that they were all right going out. <laughs> Which can be balls in the job. And we go through every whole thing and count everything yeah. is gone through. Um, goods not dispatched, review orders not matched to your good delivery notes. No record of goods dispatched, to provision of goods dispatched. Goods not received by customer, customer signs as a delivery note. Okay, and that's important that the, the customer signs as a delivery note, even if it's like getting. You know, a fill of oil or something, do you mean to make sure that you actually you have signed it off at the end? And Sorry? And you can get a fill of oil at home with the sign for it. Sign for it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, our next one is invoicing. So, goods dispatched, not invoiced. Periodic review of the goods delivery notes, not matched to invoices. So, you should always have, you should have your order, your goods delivery note, and your invoice. And you should be able to clip all those three together inside the one file and you should be able to see all the controls in place for actually for all those the, for the ordering for the dispatching and for the invoicing errors invoice errors and in invoicing check the invoice the good delivery note and order form invoice not recorded in the nominal ledger sequence check of invoices posted in nominal ledger okay so that's what we're doing for our invoicing then for our receipt Oh, so you check the numbers like if you wait, wait number one, number two, number Yeah, and to make sure they're actually, and yeah, the, you're missing four or five in the middle, yeah, just make sure they're all inside there. And like every business, should have that, even if that's for mm -hmm. knowledge, it should be there like for doing your, for your, doing your accounts and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's to be clear, and invoice is out of your book, inside the middle of it. Just leave them in there and just put a line through them. Uh, receipt then, cash not received or stolen, remittance is not recorded, foreign mail opening procedures, prompt banking. So you should have someone opening the mail, mm -hmm. okay, and then someone else actually processing the check through the system. So you actually have segregation of your juice inside right. there. They, they have someone opening the mail and someone doing the... Yeah, because that's going to be the time of the mail room. When you open the mail, if the check comes in, it goes straight into the filing tray. It goes down to a specific person to deal with. So you have two different people. Do you have the person, the person opening the mail and putting the, the check? It has to be actually yeah. sent down to somewhere else. Yeah. And, and, and like like the, there's more than one person, like there'd be, there'd be five or six people inside in the, the mail room. room, so no one person's going to get to be in high because everybody's there to do something. Mm -hmm. They all loop around the, the desk. And did it be a real amount of mail, would there? Yeah, you know, it's split like you pay away and then you have income tax. Oh, if they put them into the right envelope, so they, call, they had to call a code once before. There's a shift um, on the wall and there's all the different slots. Different, 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 different. 
Yeah, it's all online. No, they want to, but we're, we're some, some people. We, we have won't take, won't, they want to give a check, but well, they're not going to refuse a check. Well, they refuse but they're trying to... They're trying to... It makes it, make, it makes them to have to get someone to go to the bank. Yeah. Do you mean all, all the money just being transferred yeah. um, electronically, like? Wait, that's supposed to be cash. Sorry? Cash and all that. Cash and all that, yeah? Jeez. Yeah. Okay, you think all that day would be gone, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. The cash. That's probably someone was under the mattress. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <nice>. yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're going to now record in the banking system, your control would be your bank reconciliation. Okay, so that's like an overview of it, but I'll give me the more comprehensive notes behind it, which we'll just give a look down through it as well. Okay, so our customers' orders and sales returns. Okay, if you want to highlight the headings, you actually have what's going down along it. Okay, so the detailed operation of sales system will vary from business to business. It will also depend on whether a computerized system is used. If you have a computerized system, then mean all these ordering will be done sequentially anyway, and it'll be the same with our invoices. The customer's orders and sales orders. You receive an order document or telephone order from a customer at starting point of a sales system, and the following checks need to be made. Okay, the credit control section will check will take out references on a new customer. Um, our check whether an existing customer has exceeded the credit limits, and that's our very first one there, our ordering. Check our, cost, our customers. An inquiry, to, an inquiry will also be made as to the availability of goods in store or the availability of manufacturing capacity and this time and the time it will take to complete the order. Okay, that's our customer orders. Then our dispatch of the goods. So in accordance with the customer's order, the state department is in the stock position to the stock warehouse. Okay, in most, in most circumstances, the sales transaction is recognised for the accounting purposes when goods are delivered. Okay, so this is like, this is like really what's happening in um, our every day. Invoice and recording in accounting records. Serial numbered invoices must be raised promptly for goods sent to customers. Receipt from the debtors. We will look at receipts from cash sales. Okay, um, all cash or checks received must be promptly recorded in the cash book and debtors accounts in the sales ledger. Monthly statements, as part of the credit control system, monthly statements should be issued to debtors. Uh, procedures for chasing up outstanding debts should also be established. Then we've got processing and recording of returns and allowances. So when goods are returns for a valid reason, a credit note should be issued, a return should be recorded in the sales returns journal. And then bad debts and bad debts provision, and an age analysis of debtors should be Produce which, produce which shows a breakdown of debt accord according to the length of time they've been outstanding. And if you've got a computerised system, that's actually very easy to do with them 120, 90, 60, 30 day um, outstanding balances. Okay, so that's we're actually going to be, that's what, so we've got our, as I said, like, it's broken down smaller here. So you've got your, your ordering, your dispatching, your invoicing, and your receipts. Over the next page, then, it's like a breakdown of the internal controls in a sales system. Okay, so as, as the auditor must start to record and evaluate the system of internal controls before it commences the audit testing of a system. Okay, so you must record and evaluate uh, the system of internal control before it commences the audit testing of a system. So we're going to look at the types of internal controls we found in a well controlled system and what the order would be looking for. Okay, so we've got duplicate sequentially pre-numbered sales order forms and proper status to ensure validity of customers and facilitate tracking of the sales transactions. A check that the quality and quantity of goods are available in the warehouse should be performed to ensure that the customer order can be met. The credit controller should ensure customers within the credit limits mitigates bad debt risk. A staff should put on customers who have exceeded their credit limits, so it say it mitigates risk of bad debts. Acknowledgement of the sales order should be sent to the customer, confirms the sale quantity and price. Okay, so like you should have one on file and automatically you want to go to the customer as well. Written authorization should be sent to the warehouse to issue stock. This is ensure that, that, that stock is only issued to approved customers who are within their credit limits. 
On issuing stock to the customer, triplicate dispatch notes should be generated. One, a copy for the warehouse, two, a copy to the customer, and three, a copy to accounts. Okay, the copy to the warehouse will be kept so that the warehouse knows this is actually being dispatched. Copies to the customer to know that their goods, what goods they, they have got are right. And then copies to the accounts, because the accounts actually want to start chasing up looking for the money. The customer should assign the dispatch note as confirmation of receipt to authenticate the receipt of goods by the customer, which in turn is used as the base of invoicing. Sales invoice should be sequentially pre-numbered, okay? Invoice destroyed or mislaid may, may not be detected and this can facilitate fraud. So like that's a big one aside in the sales, you should always have the sequentially pre-numbered and supported by signed customer orders and dispatch notes. And I said like have your invoice, have your signed customer order and have your dispatch note. And your dispatch note should have who dispatched it, who and uh, who was the supervisor over that to actually authorise the dispatch. Yeah, and you mistake leave them and just put them through. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The numbers, yeah. Then um and I just like and like from working like this will make hopefully a good sense. <laughs> An official price list should be determined from time to time and, and be authorised by management. This is to ensure accurate pricing determined by management. Uh, foreign exchange rates are appropriate. Used on invoices should be sourced from an authoritative source such as, such as group rates or central bank rates. This is to ensure accurate pricing. And they produce you know, a rate every day you actually could use. And all you do is print off a copy of that and put it with the, the invoice you actually have so you can see use the proper rate on that particular day. Uh, discounts being offered to customers should be agreed to company guidelines or approved by an appropriate official. Okay, so they should be they should be agreed to company guidelines or approved by an appropriate official. There should be evidence of the approval. Okay, so that's a control that should be in place. And why excessive discounts may be offered impacting on margins. Customer may be overcharged for providing staff numbers to, mis to misappropriate the excess. Just okay, providing staff member to misappropriate the excess. Calcul calculation of in invoices should be checked to detect errors. Okay, that's obviously in the manual system, hopefully in the computer system. Well, we can't. We can't say it's a computer error because someone has put in the, the item. Uh, invoices being issued should be reviewed by an appropriate person, especially large special purchases. And that's to detect any errors, unusual prices, discounts, volumes, or other irregularities. An agent listing and cash collection details should be generated and reviewed by both the credit controller and management to ensure that cash is being collected on a timely basis and to minimise risk of bad debts. There should be procedures in place for chasing long, long outstanding debts, mitigates risk of bad debts again. Bad debt write offs should be authorised, a threshold may be set. Below which the credit controller may write off bad debts, but larger write offs should be authorised by the financial and sales directors. And this may be used as a method of both monitoring debt collection, identifying possible inefficiencies in the debt collection process, and to prevent the use of bad debt write off to conceal misappropriation. Because we do not set a limit, do you know what I mean? It's very easy for someone just like to write off a bad debt, but actually, do you know what I mean? Pop Come in from, uh, yeah, pocket the money inside there. Uh, an independent person should agree debtor statements with the ledger prior to being sent out to the customer's account to ensure the accuracy of statements. <coughs> there should be procedures to determine the value of goods delivered to customers but for which an invoice for the goods has not been sent to the customer. Need to determine accrual for the financial statements and to track stock dispatched. There should be procedures to determine the value of goods delivered. Like, like when would you not send an invoice? Do you wish it? Yeah. There was a time lag. Okay, in some companies there was a time lag between the delivery of goods and the issue of the invoice. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll take that. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, yeah that's you, that's you, 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 yeah. We can have a stock for a week and there's no price on it because we can't be on the invoice to price. And the invoice might come like, so yeah. a week or two later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The delivery like, document only comes with yeah. the actual stock with the. Yeah, with the yeah, it will wait for you to invoice again, like for paid or whatever it is. And why, 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 like, why do you think so long to. Is it volume of stuff or what? Well, the sales rep, the sales rep has his own um, and Oh, right, and he, he'll give and you he'll, the... We'll sign that and it'll print off the map itself and we'll, we'll, like, it could be a week before... You've got to take the delivery in, in the supplier's envelope to 
Oh, you prefer the invoice. invoice. Yeah, but you like to do the doctor and the there for figures and all that, but we can wait a week for the invoice. For the invoice. And you've been saying, would you be waiting? Yeah, we get stuck because all week, all the shops, so it comes into the warehouse and gets fit into our shop. Some stuff comes directly to us, but then the invoice gets sent to Trilly, our head office is in Trilly. And then it, oh, and do you wait for it, you want Trilly to actually price? So there's a delay, like, because yeah. on the delivery dock, it wouldn't give prices, and some of them, like, like some balance and stuff, that's fine, we get prices. But other stuff, it might just say one box, and they can be inside the box. Inside the box, yeah. That's the delivery now. Yeah. But then yeah. we have to wait until the stuff doesn't scan, because they, in the head they have to push it all on with the prices. And then it doesn't copy on until the following night. So. Some companies wait to get the delivery dockets back and customers before the invoice as well. Um, Who's that? Just, some companies wait to get the delivery dockets back and then they just issue, mm. like say if there's a problem there with the delivery docket or something was short, they just mm. invoice based on what the customer got. Oh, or right, 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 the wrong invoice. Yeah, and, and then, then credit. And it, yeah, yeah. 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 We actually put it all through and then just do debit notes. If there's something missing, we just do debit notes. Yeah. It's it, 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 it varies from business to business. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Be and the suppliers, yeah. Jeez. I don't have to, I don't have to do any that. We sometimes get it with well from suppliers and we check the stuff and do we might one one ten day missing or like one one bit of stock missing like and but like on the invoice end we pick of ours and no stock credit notes and we get credit notes over a week later. And you'd be surprised how many people don't like actually, actually check the <coughs> their delivery notes like actually on the invoice part of missing is actually on the invoice. But then to be picked to the customers for no stock credit note. Yeah. Or we have credit note we'll be there. Will it be clear? Yeah, we have to check everything out for the delivery dock. Yeah, but it's a point. We have to get off and then we have to yeah. sign it and date it and then send it out for the help. I'm seeing it coming in, like your work, people who haven't put the... They actually throw away the, the delivery dockets. I don't even check it when it comes in with the invoice. You were there. Yeah, we also get stuff missing now in our dockets. Like you get stuff in and there could be one or two pieces missing. Missing, yeah. I don't know why you don't. Like, quick, like, the mm -hmm. like I, if I've ever done bookkeeping for someone, I'd always you know, check the delivery docket and the. And I phone the stakes, you know, going back maybe a week or two that we didn't want to be even seen. And I phone payments that didn't go through. Mm -hmm. They'd have written the check and it wouldn't have. It'd have been cashed and it wouldn't have been shown up in their statement and they wouldn't have got the credit for it. Like, and some people just aren't business minded, you know I mean, they just, they yeah. just, they're brilliant business people, but they're not good at the, the both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great doing their own side of it. The free of charge procedure should be established to print and pre number dockets. These should be reviewed by a responsible official on a regular basis, ensure that free of charge are not excessive or irregular. So that's what the internal control should be and the purpose of it. And that's actually a good thing for when we're doing our exam questions. The, do you know what I mean? And like, and so like you can actually relate it back to the real life situation. So if the internal controls for sales come up to be, to be good. Then we've got sales returns. Sales returns should be agreed, should be agreed to goods returned and original invoice. This is the company originally sold goods. Fictitious credit notes may be used to conceal cash misappropriation. Credit notes should be pre-numbered and accounted for. Okay, so like your sales invoice should be pre-numbered and obviously your credit notes should be pre-numbered as well. Credit notes should be issued by an appropriate person and credit notebooks should be, should be kept securely. Credit notes could be altered to increase credit given or to an associate or to conceal taking of cash and credit notes are similar to checkbooks. Yeah, any credit notes on your work, like, I'll put the number of the invoice, reference number of the invoice on it. Like, oh yeah, the, so the, 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 it's for this invoice. So if I print it off yeah. in six months time, I know it's exactly what that it is. Invoice, yeah. And would you be honest with your work? No. Would you be honest with your work? Yeah. Yeah, we've got yeah. a lot of shit. I have no idea. Oh, I think that's not a revenue, yeah. But like, an audit every year, or an accountant does it every six months, I think. Oh, all right, yeah. So it's, um, hmm. like, every, like, you'd, you'd see it, like, you know, I mean, doing the stock takes on it, like, you know, and someone out watching you and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be present, right? They're yeah, when they can, yeah. it's up, like, you mean, they, they, are, they are supposed to send someone. Yeah. Which, maybe for a big, big God or something, you'd have to, but short than that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do they actually? I've never dug it out in an audit like that because we haven't got enough big audits. We want little ones, thank God. <laughs> then, um, a reconciliation letter to definitely control account should be prepared on a regular basis. Any adjustments to the same letter should be documented and approved. To identify errors, misappropriations. 
There should be bed death written off procedures. Um, an appropriate person should, should only make write-offs and management should also receive regular reports regarding bed debts. To this to ensure that the debit balances are only written off after all collection procedures have been exhausted. To ensure bed debts are real and are not facilitating misappropriations. Regular reports to management on sales, to determine sales performance, identify any variances from expectation, would be your budgets. Separate staff should be con concerned with recording sales and returns, customer accounts, preparing debtor statements. Furthermore, staff should not have access to stock or cash and cash books, which would be our segregation of duties. So mitigate the risk of errors, misappropriation, facilitate detection of errors and misappropriation. The first box. The first box. The middle line is Control the comp should be prepared on a regular basis. Control the again, sorry. The first two lines are there, the third line is blank. Oh, right. Um, control the comp should be prepared on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, yeah and then any adjustments to the sales ledger should. Yeah, any adjustments yeah. to the sales ledger should yeah. be documented, yeah? yeah. And that that's only applied to larger companies, though, that the large box especially. Like. Yeah, and things like for the exam, it's going to be larger companies are yeah. actually going to be looking at it. Okay, then you've got the risks that could be in the sales system. Okay, so if you look at just like the bullet points there, you've got duplicate du duplication of sales invoices, incorrect pricing on sales invoices, failure to raise an invoice when goods are dispatched to customers. Generation of a high level of bad debts due to poor credit control procedures. Recording errors in the accounting records. Credit notes raised where no goods have been returned. Underestimation of provision for bad debts. Then at a higher level of risk is likely to be found in the following situations. The client makes sales to a large number of small businesses. Many customers are new. The innate analysis of debtor should, should, shows a trend towards older debts. And then it's in some, some industries that have a, a higher sales risk inside there as well. In the example of an industry? Um, a cash, I suppose, a cash based um, um, system. Do you know what I mean? You're dealing cash. Do you know I mean? Are you actually issuing invoices for every, every, every transaction? So or something like that, is it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're just a one man operation. Like, if they're in a company, like, it's. <laughs> we see that a lot of those small people are actually companies from outside their bank that limited yeah. it at the end of them. We are probably all exempted as well. And then what the, these are actually what the controls should be in place and what they actually do. But as as the then you actually have to record their sales system. Okay, so see here, during the order of a sales system, the system of internal controls will be recorded using flowcharts and an, in an internal control questionnaire. And I actually have that for you for next week where it shows it being flowcharted and what you actually fill up inside the internal questionnaire. Because as the auditor, I mean, you have to get a knowledge of the business, so you have to get a knowledge of all how their internal controls are actually working. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all that tonight now, but we actually will be doing it. But if you look at the main points in it, you've got this internal control questionnaire and you'll be asking yourself questions so like what record is kept of sales orders received, including those received by post. Okay, and then down along to that, which we go through next week. They do the system, test the system by walkthrough. The system will be tested by means of a walkthrough test to confirm, to confirm that it conforms in practice with the recorded system. And for example, a sale, a sale could be traced through the system, okay, so you could actually trace, say you went in, okay, and you had a sales invoice at the end, and you actually wanted to go back to the start, and see if you actually followed the trail the whole way back. And you should have that, and all your controls should be there, your signing off, your, sequen your sequential numbers, your dispatch note, your order note, everything should actually be there, and you should have no problem going back. But if you have a problem then, your internal control is actually not working properly. Then you evaluate the system. 
Okay, and that's good on to that. And it's actually, they gave us an example of um, the of a, a, a walk, of a walk of a sorry of a, a evaluating a system. So your question here: You've been appointed as, as external order for the Teaspoon Limited, a small manufacturing company. Your first order assignment involved designing the system of control over the receipt of orders from customers and dispatching goods to them. Okay, so you are going to be looking at the system of control over the receipt of orders from customers and then dispatching of goods to them. After so charting the system and preparing the internal control questionnaire, the following information is available to you. One, orders arrive daily by post, either directly from the customer or via the company's area representatives, and they are sent immediately to the sales office. In the sales office, a pre-printed, two-part, unnumbered sales order set is made out for each order received. Okay, so a pre-printed, two-part, unnumbered, that'll be your section there, unnumbered sales order set is made out for each order received. The top copy of the order sent to the credit controller for approval. He checks it against a computer printout of current debtors balances and credit blacklist reports. So our credit controller is actually checking to see is this a, a good customer. If credit is approved, this top copy is then sent to the warehouse where the availability of the items ordered is checked. The second copy of the order set raised by the sales office attached to the original order form from the customer and filed al alphabetically according to the customer's name. If goods are available in the warehouse, the warehouse supervisor raised an unnumbered, again, we've got an unnumbered, six part pre printed invoice dispatch note set. Once the set has been raised, the supervisor destroys great, the top copy of the order sent from the sales office. Okay, and should he be destroying this? No. The six copies of the invoice dispatch are, are used as follows. Top copy valued by the warehouse sent to the customer as an invoice. Second copy, second valued copy goes to the account department to update the sales ledger. Third copy, unvalued again, is used as a dispatch advice note and included with the goods. Okay, so he's sending the top copy valued as um, an invoice and he's sending the third copy unvalued as a dispatch advice note and included with the goods. His batch clerk checks that no goods leave the company without this document. Fourth copy, unvalued, is retained and filed in the warehouse supervisor's office. Okay, and why he's not, I mean, big thing there is why he's not keeping a copy of the, the valued one. Fifth copy, unvalued, sent to the sales office to be filed in the second copy of the order set. And the same again, why is the valued one not going over to the sales office? Because the, the, spat, the warehouse office could have one price. The sales office could have a, a different price, and if the customer's not getting the one with the price with the warehouse on it, do you mean your um, value oh, is it? Well, I'd say the other value is what happens probably in our place, because all our lives in the warehouse is worried about is the actual physical stock. They don't, the, care, about the cost they don't care about the cost. They're, they're worried about their stock is right. Physical stock. Yeah, now about pricing. Whereas if you don't put the prices on the dispatch notes as well, because they want to keep the price for it. But a lot of our deliveries and nursery <laughs> stuff as well, there's no yeah, price on it. There's no price on it. There's a few that we get in that don't have prices on them, and the reason they don't is because they don't want the sales rep to know the price. Because he's the person who's delivering it. Yeah? Yes. Different prices, different shops, different shops. Like there's invoices we get there sometimes, and it'll be, you say, the yellow page of the invoice, right? Or the dispatch note, and it'll be all blacked out where the price should be. Yeah. It'll give retail price, but it won't give the price that we're paying for it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. It'll, like, it'll, give, it'll, like, it'll say whatever it is, one can of whatever. And it'll give a price, retail price on it, but then the price that we're paying our discount and our, to our total. Oh, that, yeah, is all and, blacked and that'd be like that'd be information to it's the company. Blacked, yeah. yeah, yeah, but like, do you mean if they're if they're if your man is valuing the invoice at the top, okay, so the fellow at the warehouse mm -hmm. is valuing it, that when the customer gets that, it you presume that that much is. Yeah, well, it's going the one we don't, and everyone's getting a valued yeah. copy. And mm -hmm. it shouldn't be up to the warehouse guy actually to put a to send an invoice. I mean, it should be in the sales office. Do you know what I mean? He could be selling it to someone he knows and actually, you know, putting yeah, different prices in there. But then I'm just thinking out loud now, you know, I haven't looked at the yeah. solution, John, we're just thinking about different yeah. things that could be there. Fourth copy, unvalued, is retained on the file in the warehouse supervisor's office. So if the sales office comes back to him and says, why did you only charge this? And he, ha he hasn't got a copy he of what he's saying. So he doesn't know what he's actually charged, yeah? 
Do you think you assume that the warehouse is actually putting the prices on the stuff? Yeah, as it says, look, top yeah, copy warehouse. valued by warehouse is sent to the customer as an invoice. Yeah. So the warehouse yeah. makes price, not the... Not the season, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, then there's a return copy unvalued as well. So we're sending the, the, the customer two of them, one with the dispatch advice, and then one as a, an invoice as well. Yeah, but we get, that's what happens with us, like a lot of our stuff. We, when we get our delivery from the you know this dispatch stuff that comes with the stuff, there'd be no price on it, it just lists the items. Oh yeah, that's box. grand, but the, uh, this one they've sent out a one. And but they, and the other one then goes to the our head office. So yeah, to the, the sales office or yeah. the, the, the purchase office or yeah. whatever. But this one is they're just in the other one like that, plus the one with the figures in it and how much it actually you see the top one there. As sent to the customer as an invoice. Yeah, but that say so that one would that top copy would say go to our head office with yeah. the prices on it and say the other one then from say from looking at it from my works point of view, the other one would just you know, with, with stock. Tea. And they might want us to know even though like I have all the details on the system anyway. Yeah. But like they might want would we so the way this one that's coming out, do you know what I mean? That they're getting more to them in the one place. One, one, office. one office, yeah. Um, and then the sixth copy unvalid is filed in the goods dispatch area in the warehouse. Okay, so you are to identify the weaknesses in this control system and recommend improvements to overcome these weaknesses. Okay, so our internal controls weakness, there's no records kept of receipts of orders at post opening. Okay, so the orders arrive daily by post, either directly from the customer or via the company's area representatives, and these are sent immediately to the sales office. So there's no record kept or receipts of orders at post opening. Okay. Lack of number in both pre-printed document set, that's fine, that's def definitely one. Um, lack of numbering, they should be pre they should be pre-numbered. Orders filed definitely in the sales office. If they were numbered, they'd be filed in date order to help with the processing control. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Instead of filing them all alphabetically, you file them by the date. So like I we this meant much orders today the twelfth. So we need to send out the invoices during a week from today. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You have all them kept instead of keeping them all with the. Do you know what I mean? You know, like if, if, like if you had A and you, you T, and like how would you keep on going and keeping track of them? It should be kept by the, by the date. As the orders are valid when it is checked by the credit controller, it would be difficult to check against credit limit. No account is taken of age analysis of debtors when checking balances. So, what does he do? And the top copy of this order is sent to the credit controller for approval. He checks it again to computer printout of current debtors' balances and credit blacklist reports. So as the order is undervalued when it is checked by the credit controller, it will be difficult to check against credit limits. Yeah, so no, it's so for he doesn't know if there's three hundred or three thousand. Yeah, you can't so say what they're three hundred or five hundred to might be able to make it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And so there's no content of the age analysis of debtors when checking balances. The warehouse so far, you should not be responsible for so many tax, tax, especially pricing. Mm. Okay, that's a, a big one there. He, he's, there's no segregation of the, the duties. The top copy of the order says should not be destroyed by the warehouse supervisor, which should be kept, which should be filed with the fourth copy of the invoice dispatch note. Okay, and with that, it shouldn't actually be just, just got rid of. Lack of consideration of value for money. Are six copies of the invoice dispatch note necessary? Copies 5 and 6 seem unnecessary. Copy 5 unvalued is sent to the sales office to file the second copy of the order set so the sales department are actually getting two. Setting. So like they can actually two raise two invoices by yeah. mistake. And then 6 copy unvalued is filed at the goods dispatch area in the warehouse. He actually is already so keeping, he already, like, he's so keeping the fourth one as well, isn't he? Yeah. So he's two, uh, he's two of them. And that would affect our stock. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the year, do you know what I mean? If you've got two of them in there, you're gonna, it could be like saying a double the amount of stock has gone out and you actually have less items there than you think you have. Or more items there, sorry, than you think you have. Um, recommended improvements then. All documents to be serially numbered. Could combine two sets of documents, order and invoice dispatch set, and use one six copy order invoice dispatch set. Documents to be valid by sales office when six parts set raised. Need a system for dealing with orders when no goods are currently available. Orders received to be logged in at post opening. Okay, so you have a system where the orders are coming in and log them in straight away. Whereas they're just getting them in and they're they're 
just passing them on to the sales office and then passing them on to the, the credit controller. They're actually not logging the actual order. So you could actually message and mean if you went to the sales office with the credit controller, if you hadn't logged it the first day, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd have missed the order maybe. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you were sick the following day, how are you going to remember that yeah. should have, uh, there should be an order there to go out? Mm -hmm. If so, it hasn't been logged in somewhere along the line. And I know this actually, you know, it's like common sense, like, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So computer is not as good stuff. Yeah, it, it, it makes it easier. And then uh, sometimes it makes it hard to order it because you have to drill down so far into actually finding mm -hmm. stuff. You have reams of paper. You couldn't say in the revenue now, they used to bump into the boxes and then they'd go into a certain um, sections, they'd be all put into folders and then they'd go down to the validation program and come along then and attach the PTS number and whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like at, at post, they wouldn't be recorded at post opening, they'd be just all thrown into their relevant sections. Mm -hmm. And, and I think someone. And so, like, if you've got the bat, the bat, a bat section, the payroll section, a, a income tax section, like yeah, all different have, sections like that. Yeah, you have you have income tax. Okay. But then you Oh, for the for the, the forms. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But then, but the letters, even the inquiries that come in, they're all going to the same. Oh, and you wouldn't log like that. This this came this in. Person, came no, in. Not, not, not yeah. at that stage. Mm -hmm. They just all get thrown into the stack. I and mean, then somebody can now take on um, 10 or 15 of them and throw them into a folder. And how long would you get them to log them then? Do you know what I mean? Do you actually... When we, used, when we were there, we used to get them done. We were doing all the day's posts, we were getting them all done in that day. But, but like then, like, they, there they, was extra staff at that time. But yeah. like when there isn't, it could take them two days to log them on. Jeez. But it wouldn't be done at the post. At the post, It wouldn't be gone down. It would all go into folders, but it just get sent down and some of the other would downstairs. It's okay. <laughs> and our last one, age of current <coughs> outstanding oh, debt balance is considered a credit checking stage. Document will be stamped approved after credit checking, so you have a little stamp to approve it. Okay, then our next part is test the controls. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that, I think I've done enough reading there, haven't I? That's testing our controls, okay, and you actually have to look at the substantive testing of, of the system. Okay, and there's a couple of little examples which we'll actually go through the next night. Okay, but that's enough on the sales system for tonight, isn't it? So just give a look at maybe one or two exam questions and then we'll, we'll finish up, alright? So if you, it's just, by well, looking at exam questions, actually just look at little things we've done over the last couple of weeks. Well, this is our third or fourth class. Fourth. It's the fourth already. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have looking at the um, this one is the um, June 11th table, right? Give me tonight. Okay, and just want to look at question two there. The, um, unusual question. It's you were recently requested to give a presentation to a group of people who are attending uh, to start their own business course run by a local enterprise board. The course organizer has requested you to address the issue of accounting and audit requirements of companies. He's asked you to set out the for the attendees what's involved in a statutory audit and in particular to address in your presentation what is an audit. Who can be appointed as an auditor? Who is responsible for the appointment of the auditor? What is or the duty duties of the auditor? Who decides the amount of audit work the auditor must undertake? Who will the audit report to? What are the outputs of an audit? And why do some companies not require an audit? Your answer will be presented in the form of a speech that you will make to the group and to refer to relevant sections of the Companies Act or to relevant auditing standards. Okay, so. And some of them are actually easy to actually answer, aren't they? What do you think? Yeah? The, why do some companies not require an audit? The main thing there would be companies are audit exempt and actually give your little figures for the audit exempt. It's probably wrong here now in this. You give it, actually you give one page. Short speech. 
But if you work today, if you want to just bring down from there, why do companies not require an audit? You can put your audit exemption there. Your balance sheet is less than 4.4 million. It's got no more than 50 employees. What was it? 4.4 million. Mm -hmm. No more than 50 employees and update the final requirements with the CRO. They're the four main points. Okay, 8.8 million, 4.4 million, 50 employees, up to date with the filing requirements with the CRO. 50 or 15? 50. Mm -hmm. And if you have any one of them, then you have to do it. Yeah. You need to be. If you don't match, yeah. you don't match every single one of them, you just. So yeah, so we, we, most, like most businesses will. Like, you need to have a lot of 8.8 million and 4.4 million in the bank. Yeah. Or in the balance sheet. Talking like most small companies don't have that. They're lucky if they have. <laughs> Most like the money's just been taken out, like yeah. to cover wages for the directors or and staff. Okay, so that's why some companies not require an audit. Okay, what is an audit? An examination of the company's financial statements. Okay, that's in a nutshell what it is. And then what what governs that? The audit. The Companies Act 1963 to 2013, and then the the ISA is. You'd have to know a few ISAs. We could mention a couple maybe there. We like we think the ISA 300 is for planning. Yeah, two audit there is process. The audit the audit process one and we have more of them. The 315 yeah. is another one a part of planning one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do the most relevant ones, yeah. you know, and you have one for the audit report, and do you know what I mean? You'd have, we'd have a couple of them. Yeah. Have they don't have the, that in their answer. Yeah, it's like that's not the full answer, is it? It looks very short. Pretty short, I don't know. Actually, where are they? Copy tax is mentioned, right? They don't have any numbers, there's no numbers. There's no even any answers. 2011, yeah? It's like they answered all the points in one of the. It says, alright. It says in the middle there, it is the order that will turn quantum con all work undertaken for the recent decision to be guided by the requirements of the ISA. I don't actually mention any numbers, but it does it say it's guided by the requirements of the National Standards of Audit. So I've got to get the page out. I think off the top of my head. Where does it say that in the middle of it, is it? Yeah. Third paragraph, just, or yeah, second paragraph, yeah, at the end of it. It is the order that will determine quantum of all the work to be undertaken for the recent oh, decision. Oh, yes, yeah. They've guided by the requirements of the ISA, so. It's and, and like like saying it all right, it's just not giving any details. It's not giving any details. And you see, if, if you look at them, say our, our very first handout we did there, what is an audit? It gives you exactly the breakdown of, in bullet points of what is your audit. Mm. Yeah. Do you yeah. have a marking scheme, you know, like we had last year, showing how many marks they give for I, I haven't seen it, but I don't know it's there. <laughs> no, it just would be handy, like. Yeah, the marking right. scheme is great to know exactly you what way the marks are. And then one yeah. Part of the way. Okay, so that is what is our audit. Who can be appointed an auditor? You must be a member of the recognised, and it's the IASA. If you mention IASA, Joe has control over that. So you've got like the IPA here, the CPA, ACCA. It should be, what would be actually better be if he asked you who cannot be appointed? Who is responsible then for the appointment of the auditor? The directors. The director is actually responsible for appointing the auditor.
and then what um, is are the duty and duties of the altar? We actually have a whole section on that. So its main one is to give an opinion, isn't it? That the accounts give a, a true and fair view. And then we won't mention the the, the, the engagement letter. What is it? A qualified and unqualified diverse uh, <laughs> opinion. But we will be learning about those two different types they can give. But that the, the main ones they give they give an opinion, the accounts give a true and fair view. Then you've got the um, the one with the the the, the proper books of account have been kept. Do they got the engagement letter? I think it's the, the five points on that. Proper accounting records have been kept. The company balance sheets and profit and loss accounts are agreed with the accounting returns. They have obtained all the information and explanations which we which consider necessary for the purpose of the audit. And okay, that's the main ones. And they've complied with the company's acts on uh, doing that. But when we about here it easier, yeah, in order for the financial statements to give a true and fair view, they will fairly affect the circumstances of the company's business, affect the commercial effect of the transactions, and say the asset business and profits of the company as a right that in accordance with the accounting policies required by company law and by the relevant accounting standards. Did you mention that inside there? Yeah. Actually, yeah, so they are called to the seven points or six points to their all duties of order. Here. Oh yes, so due to the order of Republic of Ireland, to order financial statements, yeah, reports members on the final, you know, true and fair view, okay, 1963 to 2013 again. Report where the proper books of accounts have been kept, reports the numbers where the balance sheet stayed, there exists a financial situation where they require convening an extraordinary general meeting, that's like our order engagement that we had a while ago. Report where the order has obtained all information and explanations necessary for the purpose of the audit. Report members of the auditor's opinion and if any information specified by law regarding direct remuneration, direct transactions is not given and we are practically include such information on the report. Okay, that's responsible. What they have on top, an auditor's performed to determine the validity and reliability of the financial statements. I would the order to allow the auditor to express an opinion, okay. Also includes an examination on a test basis, that's important to that include the examination on a test basis because obviously you can't test every whole item or look at every whole item so it's a test basis and the audit seeks to provide only reasonable assurance that the statements are free from material misstatements. He must be a registered auditor in accordance with Irish law and the shareholders are responsible for the appointment of an auditor. Okay, the shareholders so it's the same directors, like in most places, directors and shareholders are the same. But then in a bigger company, shareholders and directors might not be the same. But at the end of the day, it's the director's side level of engagement, isn't it? Yeah. So it you is, shareholders yeah. aren't completely in agreement on it. Yeah. The directors and some point the other. Yeah, that's it. Okay, who will the order report to? The order to report to the shareholders, the members of the company. And what are the outputs of an audit? The audit report and the audit findings letter. Okay, that's there. And then it says here, so that um, the, it allows certain carrying smaller companies claim an exemption from annual audit. I'd actually put in, if you can remember it there, Joe, the 8.8 .8 million and stuff. Mm. So it's a kind of unusual way to ask a question about um, mm. the auditors, mm. isn't it? That answer there now is a kind of a bit more, do you know, we've asked you now, we've had more kind of detail about it, yeah. the answer there, and so it's kind of a bit general. General, it is, That's yeah. Okay, is it? We'll have to, I'll have to ask him, I, I'm making notes to ask him, I'm glad I'm here, Mr. Gillian. Yeah, I've done. Yeah, you just mentioned that that particular question, but it's June 11 as well, so... Yeah, it does say actually, it's a group of people who are attending to start their own business. So you're talking to the group Yeah, how was that? You're talking to the business. You're talking to like business people who are on top instead of accountants and auditors. So you're not going to give them full details. Full details. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just not really giving them the answer to the question. We have to give you your answer towards yeah. who you're talking to. And I was talking to a nice person. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
be better off to give it anyway. Give it anyway, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. 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 those figures, because like they are, yeah. do you know what I mean? And their figures speak well, they're relevant. They're relevant. They're relevant. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll leave it there for tonight. Are you all, have you had enough? Yeah. yeah.